Good afternoon, everyone. It is so great to welcome you back to the uh, Wells Fargo Beyond College webinar series. We are at episode 10. We have made it to 10 episodes. We have one left next month. Thank you so much for all for joining us. My name is Dominique Garcia. I have the pleasure of serving as the Assistant Commissioner for Marketing here at the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Today's episode, we're going to dive a little bit deep. We're going to talk about credit fundamentals, unbox credit matters that matter because... How are we going to be able to borrow out anything if our borrowing is not good, which is our credit? So we have a lot to unpack today. We have a lot to discuss. Q&A, please don't be shy. That's what we're here for. Closed mouths don't get fed at the end of the day. But you might be wondering, well, who is the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference? That is what I am here for. I'm not here just to tell you about how to have the perfect credit score with Dewey. No, 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 no. That's not what we're doing. And we're going to go ahead and let you know about the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. So the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference is compiled of eight member institutions. We are under the umbrella of the NCAA, one of two Division I HBCU conferences, and we are blessed to have and serve the elite eight in our conference office. Yes, that will be Coppin State University, Morgan State University, Delaware State University, University of Maryland Eastern Shore, Howard University, Norfolk State University, North Carolina Central University, and our final member, South Carolina State University. If you look right on here onto our footprints, you will see that we are in the mid, what's up, what's up? I would say we're a little bit mixed, a little bit of the North, we're a little bit of the South. It's a blended perfect one. We are found in 1970 and we are located here in Norfolk, Virginia, which holds the largest naval base in the world, if you did not know that. In addition to that, we have been in service for over 50 years as a conference office. And like I said, one of two um, HBCUs under the um, NCAA for Division I athletics. And in addition to that, we sponsor 14 sports for when it comes into our championships, as well as in the big celebration bowl, yes, the big dogs. We hold a six to two overall score against the SWAC conference. But you might want to know a little bit more because you might want to tune into some upcoming broadcasting. Yes, we have some great things happening here at our conference office. This weekend starts countdown to kickoff, which means it is conference play. The, the, the stuff beforehand, that was just the fun stuff. This is now the nitty of the gritty. So please, by all means, tune into conference play beginning on Saturday, October 26th at 11.30 a.m. on ESPN Plus as we go ahead and we break down the predicted season of order, what does the overall records look like of standings, as well as who are we predicting to come into the Celebration Bowl in December. We got to know who's going to meet us there December 14th. In addition to that, we have the upcoming championships. It's Smelly Lake Championship season. So we're going to be kicking it off first with Cross Country for Men and Women's Cross Country Championship. That will also be broadcasted on ESPN+, Plus, which is the first time in history this year for the conference office. Yes, we're all about making history here. In addition to that, we have Volleyball Championship happening. Now, both are in Delaware. So if you're in the Delaware area, please, by all means, come check us out. We are going to be excited to have you with us. But Volleyball Championship, see, that will be live on ESPNU. So please, by all means, tune in, come out. We are more than happy to welcome out anybody into the conference and be a part of MEAC Nation. Now, we discussed us a little bit. It's not about us, though. We got to pop it back on over. So you have my counterpart over here, Dewey. Man Dewey over here, Mr. <laughs> Co-Partner of the Year, Mr. Great Guy of the Year. See... The thing about Wells Fargo, why we love them so much, they go above and beyond for us here at this conference office, which is why they won quarter partner of the year this year. So they've been doing all things fabulous for the conference office, and we are so pleased to be a part of this project with them. So with further ado, Dewey, it's you. It's you, my guy. Listen, Dominique, first of all, thank you so much for, for the kind, kind words. I appreciate everything that you shared. And like you, I'm excited about the work that we've been able to accomplish with the MEAC over the last couple of years. And I'm equally excited about where we are headed. I love what you referenced. We're in conference play now. It's, it's about to get real, as they say. So we're counting down. And the winner of the football regular season will then matriculate into the Celebration Bowl, which will be coming up in December down in the 404. So mark your calendars now, everybody. Make sure you, you get connected in. So Dominique, thanks. And listen, we'll be back to you in a little bit for some of the q and I think this is going to be an exciting topic here for us relative to credit. So with that said, Team Dewey Norwood, honored and privileged to now be my 26th year here with the firm. 
And so you have a QR code there as, as we jump over, you'll see a little bit about Wells Fargo. Here's what I want you to remember. $1.9 trillion is in assets under management for our firm. One in three U.S. households uh, is going to be in some way connecting in with us relative to their banking needs. 10% of the small businesses in the U.S. are engaging with us. We also have a number of great product suites across all of our lines of business. So be sure to, to reference all of those. But do us a favor. Everybody's on. Go ahead and drop into the chat where you're joining from today. We'd love to see some of those items kind of as point A. Uh, and then point B, get connected to Wells Fargo. We've got our social media handles there. Jump on wellsfargo.com, bookmark that page for us, and then be sure to connect with us on LinkedIn as well. Hey, I do want to talk a little bit about some of the strategic investments that the firm has made. Pretty excited to report, team, the, the investments that we have made relative to supporting students along their academic journey. So I once was a student, Dominique, a long time, Angel, a long, long time ago, I was a student. But pretty cool to see $119 million of financial support that's been supported, provided for higher education programs in the last few years. If you look at the last 10 or 12 years here, if you disaggregate that, we have now over $40 million of support that's gone towards historically black colleges and universities. So significant strategic investments there that we know we're reaping great, great dividends on our 107 plus HBCU campuses all over. And yes, I see everybody checking in on, on the chat. So keep those things going, T. Hey, as we continue on here, do want to spotlight some reminders for you. Make sure you're getting connected into the talent community. Go ahead and connect out there. Make sure that you're learning about those career opportunities. We had our risk partners on with us last month, actually spotlighting a lot of the opportunities there. So get connected in and make sure that you're, you're engaging in those types of spaces again across our talent community. Maybe you have a financial question. I want you all to feel confident that you can come and ask those financial questions of the leaders that are on this broadcast or the folks that are, that are connecting in in other kinds of areas and local markets and regions. So engage with them to ask those questions to get the financial pieces that you need answered. And we also had on the screen there briefly LifeSync. This is another really, really great resource for those that are maybe starting to think about investing, leverage the resources that are there, everyone, so you can learn and start building a bright future for what you want to do with your particular financial goals. Very, very, very important. HBCU legends, I was talking about these earlier today with some folks, Tim. We are now up to 44 HBCU legends cards. And Dominique, by the time we get to next month's broadcast, we're going to be able to add some additional schools on. We are excited about three schools that are going to be coming over from the SIAC conference. So Dr. Holloman and team, huge shout out to you all there. We've got Kentucky State, we've got Albany State, and then we also have Savannah State that's going to be joining the collection. We also have Texas Southern who's going to be joining us from the SWAC conference as well. So be on the lookout for those institutions as they'll be joining. And remember, retail banking customers can customize their banking experience and swap out their existing beautiful red Wells Fargo debit card with the debit cards of these amazing institutions. So really, really cool things there. Scan that QR code to be able to learn more. All right. Of course, you know we got to bring up one of my faves here. I think this is a card that Dominique has. We won't make her put it up on the screen, but she's got she's got that uh, mighty MEAC card there where we step in and support the MEAC. So please, for anyone that wants to support the amazing institutions that are a part of the MEAC conference, go ahead and select that card and then you can get connected in as you deem appropriate. So really, really cool things there. All right, well, listen, this is normally the part where I hand it off, but guess what, y'all? You get me today. And that maybe that's good, Dominique, maybe that, and Angel, maybe that's good, maybe that's not good, but I feel confident ab about the topic and pretty excited to be able to spotlight the, the work that's happening to, to credit. And I do want to shout out again, some of our past partners who have helped with this. I told them I was going to do this, and they said I didn't have to, I'm still going to do it. But to Sylvia, Jones and to Casey Galindo and to Joe Coyne and the team that helped to, to provide us with this presentation. Just know we're greatly appreciative of it. And we'll do our best to share this information from, uh, from our perspective. So here's what we'll cover on today. We're going to touch on some of the credit basics. We're going to talk about debt to income ratio or DTI. Those five C's of credit, we'll touch on those. We're going to talk about some key steps to building credit. Hey, what do I need to do to maintain? How can I continue to improve? How do I manage the debt that I maybe have now in given types of areas? And we're also going to talk about getting ready to apply for credit and last but not least, talk about some credit tools and resources. I do want to add this kind of disclaimer on today. Please remember that this is meant to be an overview. So I'm going to be sharing things certainly from my perspective and maybe some of the things that my family and I have experienced relative to credit. 
please remember that Wells Fargo is not officially a credit counseling organization. And so as a retail or excuse me, as an employee here of the firm, not certified to give you kind of direct guidance. So these are simply suggestions for things that you need to keep in mind. So listen, I know we've got a lot of stuff that we're going to cover on. So we're going to jump into it here with uh, with both feet. So when we talk about kind of what is credit, pretty important here, everybody, as we jump into this, credit essentially lets you purchase items with the commitment of repaying the funds at a later date and time. You have to actually apply for credit. Uh, and there's really two things that can happen. Either your credit application could be approved or it could be declined. Um, and it could be approved at a low level or it could be approved at a higher level. You know, they have things that are referenced called the annual percentage rate or APR. You know, this gives you the amount of interest potentially that you have to pay for any items that you that you are purchasing that, that you don't immediately pay off at the end of a given credit cycle. You know, your credit limit and how much credit you have available uh, is gonna be based on a lot of different factors. And so you may have a credit card that gives you $500 as your credit limit. That means you would have the ability to charge up to $500. But the minute you try to spend something that's $600 or $750, you're not going to be able to use that credit card at that time to be able to make that purchase. Uh, the interest rate is very, very important. And this is a percentage that's charged by the lender for borrowing money. Really important piece here. The scheduled payments are also things that you're going to have to do on a monthly basis. You're going to see things like a payment due date, due date, and you're also going to see the beginning and the end of a billing cycle. Really important to know those pieces. Uh, you know, from a credit reporting perspective, a credit report is a detailed list of your credit history. It's going to show, this is like your report card, Dominique and Angel and everybody that's on. This is your report card of the things that you have done relative to your credit in the past. They're going to talk about your open accounts. They're going to talk about your payment history. How have you managed those? Have we done a good job of them? Or did we maybe stumble in some areas that we need to make some adjustments with? And these are all important pieces that kind of get built in. And so that credit history starts with you essentially as soon as you get going. When you're first beginning, it's going to continue to grow with you over time as you have new accounts. You know, there's also a credit score. And there's a great breakout that we'll, we'll talk about here in just a moment that kind of shows you the, the levels associated with it. But it's important to know that you actually have a credit score so they're able to assign almost just again like you would in your statistics class or in your economics class or in your uh or in, or in your uh, english course that you're taking you essentially are assigned a grade right the credit score is essentially that same type of a principle i want you all to jot down the three reporting agencies i want everyone to maybe if you're in a if you're in a spot where you can these drop these into the chat if you're familiar with them already but we have equifax we have experian and we have TransUnion. So these lenders will actually use your credit score to help evaluate the credit risk or the likelihood that you are going to pay back what you borrow at the appropriate time. You know, generally, the higher your credit score, the lower the risk that you may be to a lender. Really, really important. Again, the higher credit score, you're going to have a little bit of a less risk factor there with the lender. So pretty important pieces there. We do have a couple of breakouts here. I really love the pie chart. This gives you a breakout of your credit mix, right? So the different things that you need to be considering. So they're going to be taking a look at your payment history. They're going to be taking a look at the amount that you owe on the given cards that you have out there. How long have you had those cards? Again, the length of your credit history. How many new credit cards have you opened or applied for? And can the, what's the credit mix across a lot of those areas? So again, I think some really important principles here where you kind of look at some of those credit basics and kind of what builds, again, both your credit, the credit reporting piece, and then also ultimately your, your credit score. Hey, Dominique and team, as, as we continue here, uh, let's talk a little bit about what we, what we have. And again, this is that rating component that I talked about a little bit earlier, where you can kind of see the breakouts. And you kind of see, again, kind of on the lower end of the scale, and then all the way over moving into those, those higher areas. You know, a good credit score shows that you have been responsibly managing your credit and your debts and you're doing so consistently with making those payments. And I would say those on time payments, a good credit score usually makes it a little bit easier to qualify for credit. Uh, and there are certainly standards that our firm and other firms would look at as they're making determinations on on the type of credit or whether the credit will be will be issued for you in a given way. 
you know, when you look at the different pieces here, anything that's 800 or above, boy, you are just really, really knocking it out of the park. You are performing at those super, super highest levels. Uh, and in most instances, that's going to help you potentially apply or, excuse me, be eligible uh, for some of the best benefits relative to, to credit. Really, really important there, again, when you get into the excellent range. You're not going to start there, though. You may have to build your way up to this. So maybe you're in the very good range. Or maybe you're in the range now where, hey, you're in the good range and you're pushing to be able to, to move forward. Again, all of these factors get considered as organizations are making determinations on, on, on the risk that are associated with, with you having a particular credit card. So again, you've got that continuum there that goes from poor all the way to the very, very good into that excellent range. So long-term as you're building, that's ultimately where we want to be able to be. This is a really, really good visual here that I hope you all will, will capture and be able to take a look at. I want to add to this one before we jump to the next slide. Don't forget, you have the ability once annually to request a copy of your credit reports and any of the inquiries that have come on there from those three bureaus. We talked about them earlier, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. Please, everybody go ahead and bookmark annualcreditreport.com, a great, great website, a great, great resource that you can tap into. This will give you the ability to go out and see any of the credit, credit inquiries that are out there and also to make sure Hey, if there's any questions or any discrepancies in any areas, you can kind of go through and, and touch on those. Very, very important. Hey, as we continue on here, we mentioned this term a little bit earlier called DTI. So this is essentially your debt to income ratio, and it compares how much you owe each month to how much you earn. So how much is coming in on my paychecks versus how much I actually owe relative to my to, to any outstanding debts that I might have. Spe specifically, it's the percentage of your gross monthly income before taxes that goes towards payments like rent, mortgage, credit cards, and or other debt. But um, not debt, things like health insurance, things along those lines, or maybe your, your cell phone bill or other premiums, entertainment expenses, those are not going to be factored in there. Lenders may use your DTI ratio to assess your ability to pay back debt. Remember, these are promises. Or when I swipe that credit card, the expectation is at the end of the month, we need to be able to pay that in, in full. And we're going to talk more about that a little bit later on. So those are really, really important pieces for you. A low DTI ratio is a good indicator that you have enough income to meet your monthly obligations and take care of any additional unexpected expenses that may arise. Really, really important piece there for us to think about. And this example here, really, really simple, $1,500 uh, in monthly debt payments uh, and then a monthly income of $5,000. And you see how all of that breaks out? That gives you the DTI ratio of 30%. So it's, again, these are things that you can factor in based upon the income that you have coming in. And again, based upon those monthly expenses that you know, again, the mortgage that you may have or the rent that you have to pay or those credit cards. I really love this tool that's on your team, the Wells Fargo. It's on wellsfargo.com, and this is our debt ratio calculator. Please utilize this tool. Share this tool with others that, that you think may benefit from using it, and let's continue to, to learn more again about this DTI ratio and how that factors into to credit decisions and kind of where you are from a credit standing perspective. Really, really important piece here. Really, really important piece. All right. We're going to continue on here. We've got a lot of really, really good stuff to continue to, to kind of talk about. So the DTI standards, this is really just a simple, simple breakout here. If you're falling into that 35% or less, uh, that means you're most, most likely have some money left over for saving or spending after you have paid your bills. So lenders generally view a lower DTI as a favorable factor. When you fall into that next continuum there, we're getting into that yellow range. Hey, if you're between that 36 to 49, you know, you may want to consider finding ways to lower your DTI to get it into a better position to handle unforeseen circumstances or expenses. So you have a surprise circumstance that comes up and we want to make sure that we're able to make the adjustments in the spaces that we need there. If you're looking to borrow, keep in mind that lenders may ask for additional eligibility criteria as you're starting to fall into that range. And hey, if you find yourself at that 50% range, hey, it's probably time to take some actions. You know, you have more than half of your income that's going out towards your debt payments. We may need to consider making some adjustments. 
And in some instances, you may not have enough for any, again, those unseen, unforeseen circumstances that may come up. So very, very important. When we start seeing ourselves getting to that 50% or more range, we may need to be able to make some adjustments or be able to, to get some assistance in some types of areas. Um, and also, this is another really, really key piece. Before you take out any new debt, you may want to estimate your monthly payment and recalculate that debt to income ratio so you can see how the new payments may change. Maybe it adjusts a little bit. Maybe you go from that yellow to the green, or maybe you fall from that yellow into that red area. These are important pieces, team, that you want to keep in mind as you're connecting into those areas. So a lot of really important pieces there, again, as we continue the discussions around the debt to income ratio, really important. I'd be interested in the chat. How many folks are familiar or had heard that term DTI before? I want to monitor the chat just for a moment to see if folks were familiar with that term or whether that was a new term to folks. Feel free to just drop a wire and in in there if this is a new term or something that you're, you're hearing maybe for the for the first time. Okay, we'll give you guys a moment to maybe maybe respond to that and, and see what kind of what kind of what type of responses we get there in, in those kinds of areas. All right. Well, listen, we got to jump to these five C's. Okay. A lot of folks, this is a new term for you. Thank you all for speaking candidly. And I hope now you have a better understanding of it. And again, these are things that you're going to build on over time. So yeah, it's really interesting. It looks like Dominique and Angel, hundred percent of our respondents are saying this is a new term to them. <laughs> so that means we're covering it in, in, the, in the right kind of way. All right, listen, let's get into this thing. The five C's, the credit history, your capacity, your collateral, your capital, and also conditions. So credit history, is simply your personal record of how you have managed credit over time. History, just like history class. We're looking from a point in time in the past to where we stand today. The way you've handled credit obligations in the past will help to indicate what a lender may expect from you in the future. If you are a, a seven, Dominique, we're getting close to basketball season. If you're a 77% free throw shooter, you're probably going to shoot 70%. So seven out of 10, you're going to make. But if you're a 40% free throw shooter, be prepared to get fouled a lot during the games. <laughs> Use that same principle for the things relative to credit. Creditors are going to potentially look at your past history to make determinations on whether additional credit should be extended to you in the future. That's why it's important for us team to build a strong credit history and get connected in with folks that can help us. Capacity, simply your ability to comfortably manage your payments. Lenders, again, are going to look at that DTI when they're evaluating your credit applications to assess whether you are able to take on new debt. Very, very important. Collateral, love this term. This is simply something that you own that you could pledge in the event of a secured type of a loan. Collateral is important to us as lenders in general because it offsets the risk. Remember, we talked about that risk continuum a little bit earlier. So when we have collateral that's shared, you have the ability to have some offsets again for any of the risks in the event that you're extended additional credit. Using assets as collateral may give you more borrowing options in some instances, including additional credit accounts that may give you access to lower interest rates and better terms. And we talked about some of those pieces a little bit earlier. Some capital. Hey, what do you have in savings? What do you have in investments? What other assets that you have that are available that you could use in a pinch or on a monthly basis to offset any of your loans? Really, really important pieces there. And hey, maybe there's a challenge. Maybe there's a financial setback that comes that comes into play. What can we do to leverage again? Maybe a savings account, that emergency account maybe that you have, or selling a share or some shares of a stock to be able to bring some dollars over to cover those obligations. Really, really important that we keep those things kind of front and center. We want you to be confident in the things that you're doing. And the lenders also want to be in a position where they feel confident that on a monthly basis, you're going to be able to fulfill the credit obligations that you have. Very, very important piece. Last but not least, everybody, we got to talk about the conditions. You know, economic factors are changing all of the time. Many of you all may have seen that recently there was a change in the Fed interest rates. What happens with that is that actually causes the interest rates potentially on your credit cards also to be reduced in given types of areas. So it's important to monitor the pieces that are there. Lenders are also going to be very interested in conditions. And because of this, that may impact anything that may impact your financial situation or may impact your ability 
to repay a loan. So those are things that, again, credit organizations or organizations that are extending credit to you are going to take a t close, close look at as they're thinking about the pieces relative to what they could extend to you on the credit side. So again, we've got those five C's, that credit history, your capacity, collateral, capital, and then also the market conditions across the given kinds of areas. Those five C's, really, really important. Let's hold on to those and let's make sure that we're sharing that information with others. All right. Hey, as we continue on with things, uh, let's talk about some of the key steps to towards building credit. Uh, there's a lot of things that you may want to keep in mind here, especially for those that are just getting their credit established. You know, when you're establishing uh, new credit, again, you want to focus on things where you know you're going to be able to pay those obligations off on a monthly basis. That's the goal, to be able to pay whatever you borrow or whatever you're using on those cards in a month to pay them off. So, hey, as you're maybe you're getting started with these pieces, let's talk about some of the early steps. So maybe if you're or establishing credit, maybe you become an authorized user on another trusted person's credit card. This may be an instance where a friend or a family member adds you onto their card so you can kind of start building your credit. It's very interesting. I had a conversation with someone even earlier today that talked about their credit experience and how they added someone onto their credit card to kind of help that individual strengthen their borrowing position. So that authorized user is an option. It's very important to keep in mind that not all lenders report authorized users accounts to the credit bureaus. So make sure you find out whether your credit card company does this. Very, very important. And please remember, this does carry risk because when you give someone that credit card or they're added onto the account, guess what? They can use it. <laughs> Dominique, they can go out and use it uh, and get to swiping in kinds of areas. So I think you wanna make sure that you're safeguarding yourself in those kinds of areas. Hey, next, maybe apply as a co-signer or a co-applicant. You may want to apply for, again, a co-signer or an applicant position. Uh, this may help you to qualify or acquire better credit terms in given areas. Remember that uh, the co-signer, the co-applicant also has responsibility. Team, they've got skin in the game <laughs> in given kinds of areas. So that means that your credit history may be reflective now, not just of your experience, but of the experience of both of you all. So really, really important pieces there. For our college students that are on, think about some of those college cards that are, that are available to you. Uh, my wife and I have two kids. They're both out of school now, and they both applied for credit cards while they were in school. And so this may be something that you wanna consider. You're gonna have to do your research, take a look at all of the different offerings that are out there, and then take advantage, again, as you choose to, of the opportunities that are available. When you're in college, that's a great time to start building your credit. Dominique, I'm going to use my classic line. You want to build credit when you're on campus with some J's or some Birkenstocks on. Don't, don't wait until, and you can wear your J's or Birkenstocks later too, but you wear them on campus today. So build that credit now, and then we'll be able to leverage those pieces in the future. So think about some options that are there. You know, often those, those college cards may accept applicants who do not have a strong established credit history. Very important piece here, team. As a result, those college cards are probably going to have lower credit limits than some of the other credit cards that are out there. But again, you're starting. You're just getting onto that financial road with building things. And so it's going to be really, really helpful in those kinds of spaces. Those secured loans or secured cards. Hey, what does that mean? That simply means that you're using this mechanism almost as a, as a deposit. Hey, I'm going to deposit $500 on this card, and then I'm going to be able to go and make purchases for that $500 in given types of areas. You also have the ability to have a secured loan. This is a loan that's backed by some other piece of collateral. We talked about some of those things across other kinds of areas. So those are ways that you may want to be able to connect in again for a secured card in those types of areas or a secured loan. Again, where, again, you know it's going to be backed against something else or, hey, I've got $500 on this. Boom, we're going to pay it off, and then we're going to be able to add some more on there as, again, we're building our road to great credit. Don't forget, we've got some retailers out there. We've got this, the gas cards, and this is a popular thing. I remember my wife sharing years and years and years ago. I think she had an Exxon card. Uh, it was a gas card <laughs> since that she used, and so she would swipe it, and then at the end of the month would pay it or would swipe it and, and then go ahead and make the payment on it. So that's another really, really great way to consider acquiring 
credit from an early, early perspective. But again, team, we have to put the disclaimer here. Please be aware that there may be different terms associated with each of these credit cards. That annual percentage rate, which I think we're going to talk about a little bit later on the presentation. Or again, remembering the importance of doing everything you can to pay off that full credit card balance every month. If there's a big theme to kind of take away from the slide before we jump to the next one, start slowly. Don't open up too many accounts at once, everybody. Let's start. Let's gradually build for the future. And remember, our goal is to pay off those balances monthly. If you don't pay it off of the end, at the end of the month, you are going to accrue interest. And we talked about that at the top of the call a little bit. And we'll talk about, we'll talk about it a little bit more. But that interest is, hey, what is the amount that I have to pay over and above what I owe because I carried my balance from one month into the next? And again, you're going to need to follow the, the terms on this, being able to see when my payment date ends, seeing where my bill date ends, and then making sure you're having constant conversations with your lender if there are any questions there. Everybody, don't forget, everybody's credit situation is different. Maybe someone has got that 800 credit score. Maybe someone is just getting their credit started and they're at the lower end of the spectrum. That's okay. Our focus is to build towards making credit better. If we're doing that, we're making progress. If we're making smart decisions, then it's going to put us in the right places as we build out for the future. All right. We're doing good on time here, but I do want to remind everybody to please utilize the Q&A feature. We're going to be dropping uh, and opening up for, for questions that may be out there in Radio Land here in, in just a couple of minutes. So we got a few more slides to run through, and then we'll jump into the, to, to those items from there. All right. But we got to talk about the maintaining credit. Hey, now we're off and running, Dominique. Angel, we're off and running. We got our credit going. Scholars, we're running. We're, we're, we're making a purchase and then we're, we're paying it off at the end of the month or we're making that purchase and then making a payment right after it to, to offset it. So listen, again, we now need to talk about the maintenance fiend or maintaining your credit and the things that you want to build on. In order to maintain your credit, it's important to understand what affects your credit score. Payment history. No surprises there, right? How much do you owe? What's your credit history? What's that credit mix? And also the percentage of new credits, all of or the credit that you have, all of these pieces will impact your credit score. So let's unpack these a little bit more. Payment history. You guys see it there on the screen. 35% of your credit score is going to be based upon your credit history, your payment history. So again, paying your bills on time, every time, can significantly impact your credit score. Very, very important. How much do you owe? Hey, using the entire credit limit on your credit card may be a negative and have a negative impact for you. They really want you to stay at about that 30% level. So again, let's use our same $500 example here. My math is right on this. If we have $500 on a card, we probably want to spend about 150. I think that's 30% if my math is, is not off. That's about where we need to be. Uh, so again, when you get to the, anything above that, hey, you want to make sure we're getting those items paid off. But remember, team, it's our goal to pay it off every month. And maybe things come up sometimes, and maybe you can't. But we want to get in the goal or get in the, in the position where we're paying that credit card off the full balance every month. That credit history, we talked about it earlier. Another key factor that's here, 15% is our breakout there relative to that. That's another contributing factor. You know, how long you've had that credit, how long you've been building it, and again, how you are using those accounts uh, that you have. So again, 15% contributing in there, really, really significant, a significant piece. The credit mix, um, you know, having different types of credit, whether it's an auto loan, whether it's a student loan, again, this is going to factor in at another 10% for you there uh, in given types of, in given types of areas and different types of spaces. And then also those new credit components of things, you know, that's going to be another key factor that drops in here. So again, as we break these down, if we look at that 100% of the pie, 35%, boom, your payment history. 30% your, uh, is going to be how much you owe on any of the cards that you have that are out there. Credit history, 15%. They're going to look at that team. Again, we talked about utilization a moment ago, but they're going to look at that credit history to see how you perform. The credit mix, that's another 10% contributor. And then any new credit that you have there, 
So this pie chart, I hope, gives you a, a decent example of kind of some of the pieces that are in there. I know we touched on these a little bit earlier on in the presentation, but I hope this gives you an example of what you need to be factoring when you're looking at 100% of what builds out your potential credit score and the pieces that you're going to need to keep to maintain and build your credit in the future. Really, really important pieces here, team. All right, we're going to continue to go on here, and we're getting down to the last couple of items, and we're going to be able to open it up for Q&A and, and some other kinds of thoughts here. You know, some tips to maintaining your credit, right? Some things that you all need to be keeping in mind. Uh, obviously, it's important to only charge things that you can afford. Uh, it's funny, we we did a, had a webinar recently, and as a part of that uh, event, we actually had someone on, and they shared the following statement. Uh, if you can't buy it twice, it's probably too expensive. That's a, that's a good note. <laughs> that's a good note. That came came by way of our Ebony Yard Fest event that the firm hosted recently with Cam Newton and with the team down there at Clark Atlanta as a part of his Funky Friday podcast. I really love that. So shout out to Cam. If you can't buy it twice, double check yourself. It may be too expensive for you. So that's important when you're thinking about the, the affordability pieces there. Tim, we got to make sure we're not maxing out. This is not like the weight room, Dominique, where you get on there and you throw all the weight on the on there on the squat rack or, or on the on the bench. You say, "I'm gonna max it out, baby. I'm going for three fifteen today." And then we taking you somewhere to go get your shoulder repaired. Don't do that. Say, say, same same approach here with with your credit cards. We don't want to max these out in any given areas. Tim, we talked about it earlier. We got to pay on time. And by the way, Dominique can lift three fifteen. Not me, Dom, but Dominique Garcia. She's not picking at her now. She can lift three fifteen. That's 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 that's, that's three forty fives on both sides of the bar for those that are that are in the weight room. That, that's a lot of weight. Uh, but listen, it, it very very important. You got to pay those bills on time, every time. You've got to make sure you're doing that. This includes the credit that you have for certainly your credit cards, but this also includes your utilities. Everybody, this is your cell phone. These are your other bills. We need to make sure that we're paying those obligations on time so we're not incurring a late fee by missing it by a day or we're not having to pay the interest because we are extending into that next pay or that grace period of the payment cycle to be able to, to pay off our balance. Really, really important. Keeping those balances low. Again, same weight room example. Keep the balances low. And as you continue to build, you can make adjustments in the spaces where you need to. Let's pay more than that minimum. Let's say you are having to carry over some entry, or excuse me, carry over a balance in a given month. Let's do what we can to pay a little extra. $5 here, $10, $20, $50 in a given area can make a significant difference. And I want you, also want you all to look at your credit card statements that you're receiving. I really love this. They will give you a breakout and they say, hey, if you pay just your minimum, this is how long it's going to take you to pay off that card. And they're also going to tell you how much interest you're going to pay. I want everybody to look at that for your next credit card bill that comes in, especially if you're thinking, ah, I think I'm just going to make the minimum this month. I'll just make the minimums this next six months. I want to do this. I want to spend some money here. For the next 18 months, all I'm going to do is pay the minimum. What you're going to see with that team is it's going to take you a longer time to be able to pay off those loans. And again, you're going to see interest, that annual percentage rate that we talked about earlier, whether it's 15% or 20% or even more than that in some instances, Though that's where those pieces will get factored in. So again, let's make sure that we're paying those those pieces off. Uh, but again, if you're in an instance where you, instance where you have to do the minimum balance, let's try to do a little bit extra there in the spaces where we can. Hey, let's, let's keep an eye out for lower interest rates. This is something that you can do periodically. You can call up your credit card company and say, "Hey, listen, I've been a great customer with you, a great, great payment history. I would love for you to see if I qualify for a lower interest rate." Or, hey, I'd love to see if there are additional promotions that are available. Maybe I have to carry a little bit of a balance for the next six months. Can I get in a position where I can have a special interest rate in different types of areas? So keep an eye out on those interest rates. Read the fine print. Look at the emails that you're getting from your credit card companies. Look at special options. And every once in a while, call the customer service team there and find out if there are additional options that may be available for you. Hey, if you're having difficulty, yeah, let's keep using our weight room example. If you're having some difficulty in an area, get a spotter. Get someone that helps you lift it. Same principles here, team. If you're running into a challenge in a given area, maybe something's changed. Maybe you've had an additional unexpected bill. 
get in contact with your creditors. Talk to them about the situation. Ask them to provide you with options that are available. Again, maybe it's an option of a, of a special interest rate or something along those lines. I promise you, if you ask, you'll be able to find out the resources that are there and are available for you. Very, very important team. And last but not least, listen, we're, you know, we had our cybersecurity webinar a, a couple of weeks back. We talked about cyber and things that happen. You know, maybe you lost a credit card. Maybe you're out of the theme park. Or you were hanging out with friends over the weekend or you lost a wallet. Hey, listen, let's make sure we're getting in contact with our credit card companies immediately to put a freeze on those. I love the Wells Fargo app because you have the ability literally to go in and turn on and off a card if need be. So make sure that you're leveraging those resources. In addition, you can call those credit bureaus that we talked about. Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, you can call them and you can put a stop or a freeze on your credit right there. So I don't want any new credit established. And then, hey, when you find the cards, you can call them back or you can click that button through the, through the Wells Fargo app and then turn that card back on in the given spaces that you need to. But again, just keep in mind, if something happens, put a stop on those cards. Or if there's a situation where some you get, the information gets compromised in a given way, let's put a stop on those. But again, let's keep the communications open with our companies so they know the different things that are happening out there. Really, really important, team. Really, really important. All right, we're getting down to our last couple of items here. We're just going to touch on these at, at a basic type of a level. You know, some things that we need to think about. Listen, let's make sure that we, we know our credit score. We can do that. Use that great credit close-up tool that's available. If you do a Google search for that, you can jump on there. Uh, you can also get access to how you're performing. You know, this actually will give you a breakout with a lot of firms now, and with Wells Fargo, you can actually see, hey, I moved up five points this month. What did I do to do that? Maybe I need to do more of that. Or, wow, my, my credit score went down 10 points this month. What did I do? Did I do something differently? Did I take out a new account? Did I go in another kind of an area? You can use those pieces. Remember, you can also get that free credit report. We touched on this earlier. That's annualcreditreport.com. Team emphasis on free here. You should not be charged for this. If you are utilizing a service that's charging you, I want you to double check on that to make sure that's something that you, you want to be using. But again, this is going to give you the ability to check that credit report on a calendar basis, again, across all three of, the, across all three of those bureaus where you can see. Again, improvements on credit. How do, I, how do I improve? Do we? My score is in this place. I want to do better. It goes back to what we said. Make those consistent payments on time, every time. Every month, let's do everything we can, team, to pay off the full balance. I know that things happen. Maybe you have to carry a little bit of a, of, of a balance for a month or two, but let's do everything we can to aggressively take those things down and pay off that full balance every month. We got to practice healthy credit habits. We talked about it. Buy the items that you know that you need, and then let's make sure we're paying off those items where we can. Let's keep those credit balance is low. And again, we talked about those ratios there. I've heard, I heard again, 30, 35%, I think is generally where they want us to be somewhere in those spaces. Um, just remember that, that you want to be able to keep those ratios there, keep those balances in a place where they're low. And listen, last but not least, it, let's, let's set a budget. Let, let's set a budget in the space where we need to. Uh, let's say, hey, these are the things that I'm committed to. I'm making sure that I'm making those payments. And I'm also going to make sure that, hey, maybe I'm not going out to get the fancy cup of coffee. You know, maybe I'm deciding against uh, that, that new dress, or maybe I'm deciding against uh, the new tie for now, so we can focus on paying off some of those obligations. Everyone knows kind of where they stand. And if you don't know where you stand, call those creditors, get in contact with them, talk about solutions, talk about, again, areas where, where you're trying to make adjustments, and then use that as, as a means of being able to, to help you build for the future. Really, really important there. Again, let's stabilize any of the challenges that we're facing. Let's set a budget and baby, we got to make those minimum payments on time, every time, every time. All right, we're going to jump through the last couple of items here, everybody, uh, and then give you some reminders and then we're going to open it up for, for Q&A. Again, we've got a really, really simple example here of the annual percentage rate. And this is based upon a couple of factors, everyone. When you look at someone, again, that's got excellent credit, I won't say versus, I'm going to say in comparison to someone that has maybe good or fair credit. So if we're taking out that loan of $15,000, 
an individual, and please keep in mind that this scenario is a hypothetical and it is for our purposes here for illustrative purposes only, but I think it's a pretty good example. If I'm a person that has excellent credit, my annual percentage rate, hypothetically in this example, is 5%. So that means that my monthly payment to pay off that $15,000 loan is going to be $352. Not bad, right? Hey, let's take a look at the good. Let's say that your your credit is in the credit status is in that good that good area. Excuse me. The APR for this again with our hypothetical example is ten percent. Look at what happens here, team. We now have increased by almost forty dollars. If I'm doing the math right on this, for what it would pay be for now our monthly payment. Again, and that's the move from excellent to good. But let's take a look at fair. Look at what happened. Look what's happened here. For fair credit, we're now playing. 15% for that annual percentage rate. Look what that does to our monthly payment. It's jumping up again. We're now almost $70 extra that we're having to pay a month here relative to that. So this is what we talked about earlier, that building that important credit history. Very, very important. Very, very important. Very important to keep those things in mind. Um, here's what I will tell you. We've got another really great, great resource that's listed on the page of how to get a loan. Uh, and this is, again, another great, great place where you can jump on and take a look uh, and see some of the things that you need to be taking it into consideration. But again, $75 in savings a month, team, depending on where your credit is from that fair to that excellent range. Very, very important. Again, we're talking about the steps of improving credit. We've started and hey, baby, we're going to make progress. We're going to move forward and do these things in the right type of a way. And this is the exact way to do it, team. This is a really, really good example. Now, multiply that number by five or multiply that number times 25. <laughs> Dominique and Angel, when you think about buying a home, these are the same things that will get factored in. That's where we want to keep our credit excellent. We're striving, just like we do in the classroom, just like we do in the athletic field or in the gospel choir. We are striving for excellence in everything that we do. We can do those same types of things as we're building and improving our credit in the days ahead. Hey, let's talk about managing. You know, again, you may run into an instance where you run into a challenge. Maybe you've had a, a setback in a given area. That's okay. We talked about it earlier, the importance of staying in contact with your, with your lenders to make sure that they know about things. But there are some additional resources that are out there relative to debt consolidation. I would encourage folks to just look that term up, and this just gives you the ability to maybe combine or transferring multiple debts, especially your highest interest ones, into a single new loan payment. This is a way to kind of simplify your repayment time frame. But important piece of this, you want to remember that debt consolidation is a resource that is going to be one that you need to research. Before you apply, we want you to take a look at all of the considerations of your existing debt and the interest rates, even some of the terms that are associated with it. Very, very important. If you're thinking about combining those areas, team, you know you need to need, need to know what that is going to change relative to your monthly payment amount. Maybe it's now going to increase. And so you need to take a close look at those things if you're considering any types of kind of debt consolidation areas. Hey, listen, this may give you a chance to, you know, pay off some debt a little sooner by refinancing to a shorter term. Hey, I'm willing to pay a little bit more every month because I want to pay this off more quickly. That's another option that, that's available to you uh, in different types of areas. Certainly, you can take into consideration uh, uh, adjustments that you're making to your monthly payments. Um, you know, always focus on, I never want to say always, but please consider focusing on paying off your most expensive loans first. Whatever the highest interest rate one is, you want to make sure that you're paying that one off first. And then, hey, now we've gotten that one paid off, I can take those additional dollars that I have and start putting those towards another area. Really, really important and a simple principle there, team, that you can apply into. Now, paying off those debts on those higher interest rate cards first may help you to reduce your overall interest costs that you have. And then again, you take those dollars and boom, we're going to roll those into those next payments and continue to get to that space where every month we're paying off everything that we have to do. Now, listen, 
we talked about it earlier. You've got to know your limits there. You got to know your limits. You have to know the spaces where you need to be involved and any of the spaces where you may need to make adjustments uh, in given kinds of areas. So again, there's some great, great resources out there, some different things that you all can, can tap into and, and keep in mind. All right, we're down to our last two slides here, and then we're going to open it up, Dominique, to see what questions we have there. Um, look, let's talk about those that, that may or may not have credit cards right now. Some things that you need to keep in mind. Grab a pencil, grab a pen, grab your iPhone or your Samsung device or your tablet and, and jot these down. Identify your financial goals. Write them down. This is really the first step as you start building a plan towards borrowing. Hey, what are the things that are long-term plans for me? What am I setting aside maybe for an emergency fund or any unexpected expenses that may be come into coming up in a given area? Hey, it may be something that's long-term. I want to own a home or I want to be able to, to own a condo or maybe I'm thinking about a car. How can you start planning for your financial goals? Just like in class, everybody, you got to know your scores. You got to know your scores. Make sure that you're staying in close contact, again, with those credit agencies that we talked about earlier, looking at that credit report on an annual basis to know how you are performing. Just like with classes, we got to check up. You know, you have your exams or you've got those midterms. Now I want to see how that's going to factor into my overall performance. You're doing the exact same thing by evaluating your credit history. You got to look at discrepancies. How many of you all have gone back to a professor or, you know, to, to the TA and argued about a grade? And so, hey, professor, I really feel like I got this answer correct. It's the same principle here, team, on the finance side. If you see something that's a discrepancy, call up that lender, get in contact with them, let them know, hey, this is not me. Didn't do this. This is not me. This is incorrect. I paid this off on time. Make sure that you provide that information to do the things that you need to do in those kinds of areas. We talked earlier again about the debt to income ratio. You want to calculate that. Utilize that DTI debt ratio calculator that's on the website. It's going to be really, really helpful for you. Listen, don't forget to tap into tools. We've got a lot of resources from the Wells Fargo perspective. You can tap into the financial health tools that we have that are available. You can look at the tips. You can certainly jump online and learn about other resources that are out there and discuss options that are going to be the most suitable and work best for you. We said this earlier, everybody's credit situation is going to be different. Everyone is gonna be different. So you have to kick those, take those factors into consideration as you're determining the best things for building your credit for the future. Not mamas, not aunties, not your boyfriends, not your girlfriends, not your classmates. It's not about them. This is about you building credit for you to build a strong financial future. And how do we do that? Let's ask for help. Let's ask for help. Let's get in contact with our banking partners. Let's connect with trusted partners. Let's maybe have a conversation with a friend or family member that's a little further along the lines. Maybe they own a home now. Maybe they were able to purchase a car. Maybe they paid off a home. Maybe they're investing in types of areas. Let's go to trusted partners to get information. From a personal perspective, Angel, Dominique, I love the folks that we work with at Wells Fargo. <laughs> you can go into a branch. You can set up an appointment. Talk about the financial goals that you have. Talk about the resources that you have current day and talk about the things that you want to continue to build on for the future. All right, credit tool, cool tools. We touched on these earlier. This is a quick revisit. Hey, that credit close up, utilize the tools that are there. You can do the Google search for that to bring it up. Complimentary monthly credit updates. You can see the breakouts there. That DTI, I'm on it again, everybody. That debt to income ratio. This is an important one, y'all. <laughs> We got to determine how well we are doing aggressively addressing debt in those types of, what are we doing to pay it off? Am I paying something extra? Am I only paying the minimums? How is that going to impact me? Am I, pay, am I over utilizing a card in a given space or given area? All of those things that are factors that are going to be really, really important. Annualcreditreport.com, please, everybody look up this site. I bet some of you all may have looked up while we've been on the broadcast. Let's look up that site, access. That credit history, again, let's look for those discrepancies, just like your, your, your midterm exam where you saw that you got a question right, but it was marked incorrectly. Do those same types of things for your credit report. And then last but not least, don't forget about, again, the financial health resources that are available for us. You know, we've got great resources available through our 
through our hands-on banking platform. Many of you all may be familiar with that. We've got other resources that are available for our student athletes that are on through our game plan platform that's available for student athletes on HBCU campuses where you can connect in and, and continue to, to build some of these critical financial principles across different types of areas. Again, we're maintaining and building for the future. Those are the things that we want to be focusing in on. All right, and then last but not least, and we touched on these a little bit earlier in the broadcast, we've got some good resources that are available. I brought up again this appointment slide. Here's what I want you to do. When you set up that appointment with the banker, let them know that you joined today's webinar. And they hit, and hey, as a result of what you learned on this webinar, you decided to set up an appointment with a banker and you wanted to be able to learn more. You wanted to be able to, to get better guidance, better insight, to start building those financial goals that you're setting for yourself. And then don't forget, if you prefer to do something over the phone, you can contact the customer service number that's here. Please remember that when you contact them, they may be asking for some of your financial information. They may ask you for things like a social security number or other means to be able to verify you. Please make sure that if you're sharing that information, you're sharing it with credible sources. And again, when you call an 800 number, the Wells Fargo 800 number, let me be very, very specific here, that may be some information that they ask. We kind of touched on that a little bit earlier in the broadcast, that there's going to be some things that they're going to ask for. And again, to look at your history, to look at past. So do your best to answer those things as accurately as possible so that you're able to build a clear picture of where you were going. Bottom line, wherever you are, everybody, wherever you are on, it's a journey. And, and I used this analogy recently. You know, how many of you all out there um, have your driver's license? Virtual show of hands if, if you got your driver's license, right? When you did, before you got your driver's license, you had to go to driver's ed, right? Everybody had to do the, the in-person classes. Right. You had to get that. They used to have a manual, Angel and Dominique, that you'd have to look through to see everything. So you've got to do those pieces. And then what happens? Eventually you go and start doing the road testing. But then one day you have to ride on your own. This being on your credit journey is just like that. You are just beginning your financial journey now. Maybe you're starting in the slow lane. Maybe you're just getting started. That's OK. You're going to be able to press the accelerator and you're going to be able to speed up over time. You're going to be able to jump into the fast lane in the spaces where you need to. You're gonna be able to share this information, add others to the car to ride along with you along this financial journey, but you're on the road now, but you can't go 25 miles an hour until you go five miles an hour. You can't go five miles an hour until you put gas in the car. So I just want you all to know you're building a financial journey. You're building a financial future. And please know that the Wells Fargo team is here to help. Our Beyond College webinar series the content that we share in this space is, is meant to help you. And we hope that you find this information helpful, whether you're joining us live or, live or folks listening to the playback. We hope you find this information helpful. And again, continue to call on us if there are questions or things that we can answer to help you along your financial journey. So, Dominique, a whole lot of me talk. That's probably more of me talking than we've had on any of these broadcasts ever uh, rel relative to things. So, Dominique, I, I want to give you a moment here. First of all, did anything jump out to you from, from what we shared? Anything that you want to add from your personal perspective? And then we've still got a few minutes on the clock, so we may take a, a couple of questions and, and see what we have out there. So give us your take, Dominique. What, what did you think of all of this? <laughs> I Look, I've always told you I'm a lover of Wells Fargo. I got my <laughs> first credit card with Wells Fargo when... I was a senior in 2013. Yes, I will start telling you my age, how exciting that is. Um, and the Wells Fargo is what helped me actually learn what credit actually was. So yeah. looking at the score, you made me very excited because I'm now over in the green squad with it all. But I can definitely attest and tell everyone on this call that I was one person that built it all the way up with Wells Fargo. I've had the same credit card wow. since 2013 and kept it open the credit line has grown and that's what honestly lets you know i remember when i first opened up my credit card it was only up to so much that wells fargo would let me borrow and now i see it like every two years it just grows and it keeps growing it keeps growing and even if i don't touch it it has changed it's changed me completely to the point where i've had wells fargo sit me down to tell me 
remove yourself from your debit card. This is how to properly use your credit card. And this will wow. help you out with your debt to income ratio to ensure that you're not paying in abundance. This will keep you locked in, loaded of knowing what your actual budget is because you're seeing the physical number. They've taught me, like he said, do not pay the bare minimum. I got to a point where the individual I was working with, they had me on two payments a month, going back and forth, mm. building credit with it. I've gone, I can be a testimony of a person who got out of college, got excited. And when I tell you, Wells Fargo sat me down and gave me the whole background behind building credit. <laughs> I literally went from a college student with less than 10,000 in credit card debt to I paid off in full monthly now. And it's been that way for the last five years. So I can definitely tell you all that Wells Fargo will get you ready and they will make wow. sure that that credit score is, is reflective of their hard work of just being able to educate their customers. So it's definitely helpful. And we have some wonderful questions that have hit um, so by all means, let me know when you're ready. And Dominique, before, before, hold on. So before your question, thank you for the transparency there. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the transparency there. I really appreciate the way that, the way that you shared that. And listen, it's a journey. You know, we use the, mm -hmm. the driving on, on, on the, on the Autobahn. <laughs> or, yeah, it's or, definitely or, or a driving journey. on the rural road. A credit card will teach you when you're overspending. It will teach you. And when I tell you all, I'm a very transparent person, like Dewey saying, I was a college student that was fairly great with in when it came to my finances, but life can happen at any point. You start to have fun and you start to forget what really matters. And I remember at one point, my credit fell into the 600s. I just opened up the mm -hmm. app not too long ago because Wells Fargo does give you an update of your FICO score. So do remember that they do give you yes, a monthly update. I'm now in the 800 range. So when I tell you Wells Fargo has sat me down and schooled me to the game, this is what you need to look at with loans. My car loan was with Wells Fargo, paid that off this year, off of them teaching wow. me. When it came into credit card debt, I leaned the heaviest with Wells Fargo to teach me. So I feel like I'm a Wells Fargo's baby. My mom's had it since <laughs> in Ridley, California. I tell Dewey this all the time. My mom even you brought do. our East Coast branch food. <laughs> bought them lunch when they came to came to our area but I can definitely tell you since 2013 I've leaned the heaviest on Wells Fargo and they're not my only credit wow. card holders now I have different I have different credit card holders but they are my always go back to whenever I'm kind of in a ruffle and even yeah. when Dewey spoke about identity theft I literally just dealt with that this summer of someone calling a non-Wells Fargo bank changing out all my information. And when I was trying to change it back, I actually called Wells Fargo back to ask them, what was I supposed to do? And I had an agent walk me through the entire process and it wasn't mm. even Wells Fargo I was dealing with. They were just trying to help me out so that I could get past it. So when I tell you guys, I am a true lover and testimony of Wells Fargo. I'm just <laughs> waiting for them to be my house loan at this point, my home loaner. Come so. on, that's, listen, and it, but, it, but it's exactly what you said, sis, and it's building and building and building. And here's the other piece. I know we'll get to the Q&A after this. Guys, it's okay if you run into a challenge. It's okay. Let's say, again, I'll keep using examples from class and from the weight room. So I'll stick with the classroom. If you're running into a challenge in class, what do you do? You don't wait until the end of the semester and then scream and say, professor, you know, I've got a D in the class. How can I get to an A? No, 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 no. After the first quiz, after the first you know, exam. I'm going to office hours. I, I, I'm sitting down with the professor, he or she, to say, listen, I, I don't understand this. I need to get with the teacher's assistant. I need to go to office hours. It's the same principle here, team, when it comes to finance. If you run into a challenge, let's acknowledge, hey, listen, this is a challenge area for me. Let's learn from those challenges and let's make the adjustments that we need to make. Yes. That may mean I'm not spending anything else on insert here. I'm staying out. I'm not, I'm not saying any brands because you know me. I, you know, we, we like the brands <laughs> in, in a respectful way. So I'm going to say, but I'm staying out of the department stores. I'm not going to XYZ for dinner. I'm going to focus on addressing this debt. Let's do those things first. And then it's going to put us in a, in a further position down the line. So, all right, Dominique, listen, we got we got a lot to unpack here. We've still got about 20 minutes or so. We'll use as many as much of this time as we can. And I'll do my best to answer any of these any of these questions. So, Dominique, please fire away. Yes. Yeah, so the first question coming in is in regards to 
what credit card should I consider as a college student, as my first card? Yeah, listen, I really love what we talked about with those college cards. And here's the great thing, team. There are tons of resources that are available online for you to take a look at. I gave that example again of, of, of our kids. Both of them applied for their credit card while they were in college. And so I have to remember uh, our daughter, I think she maybe got one or two, and I know that our son got two, but they applied then in college. It's going to be those cards that we talked about earlier with those smaller balances. Team, it's going to be $500. Maybe it's a thousand, maybe it's a thousand dollars, maybe. But what's going to happen is when you start using that card, paying it off at the end of the month, it's exactly what Dominique said earlier. The bank is going to say, wow, this is a person that is managing their credit, even though at the beginning, they're just getting on the highway, they're just beginning it, but they are beginning to move in the right direction. We can trust them with a little bit more. We can trust them with a little bit more in given areas. So please look into those college cards that are available for you. Take a look at the benefits that are associated with cards. Maybe you're a person that's interested in a card that's going to give you rewards back, meaning what I spend on a monthly basis, when I pay it off, the, the bank is going to provide, or the credit card provider is going to provide me with something different. Maybe our travel friends are out there. Drop into the chat, guys, the last place that you've traveled. I'd love to see it. Maybe you're a travel person, so you want to get the person that has the, get one of the ones that has the rewards cards associated with, with miles or for hotel stays. So it's really going to be based upon where you are on that credit journey and the things that are important to you. Maybe your person wants cash back. I want, I want that cash back. Or I want to be able to receive rewards points to get a gift card. And I will say now, gift card at Macy's or gift card at Best Buy or a Walmart or Target or something like that. There are cards that offer those things. So you're going to need to look at the different benefits that are available. But if I were to offer a suggestion, again, please, as I said at the top of the call, not a financial advisor, nor do I play one on TV, but I would suggest looking into some of those college cards or looking into some of those secured card options as we dip our toe in the water of credit to build for the future. So, Dominique, I think that's the counsel. Candidly, that's the counsel that, that Amanda and I provided our kids. I think that's the same guidance that I, that I would encourage others to, con to consider as well. Yeah, and by also heading over to, you know, the resources and heading to wellsfargo.com, you're going to be able yes, to look at the difference between all the credit cards. You'll be able to see, like Dewey said, the benefits, which one is going to be best useful for your lifestyle. So yep. it's definitely helpful to go through each of the descriptions of the credit cards to figure out what is best for you, because what is best for your best friend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your mama, your daddy, grandparents or gra grandmother, whoever <laughs> it is, it may not be for you. So you definitely want to make sure that you're looking at the disclaimers of what fits best for your lifestyle and what you're able to fulfill. And Dominique, it may not be best for you at that time. Yeah. You may not get the black card five days after applying. You, that, mm -hmm. you may or may not. Now you can you can switch your card, maybe make it black, but you're probably not going to get that one five days in. So you've got to be able to build. We're starting out, team. We start where we start. We start smart, and then we get moving. Get moving. No, I, All right. We begin Please. staying. Oh, sorry, Dewey. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know we got some more. Go for it. As we begin talking about, you know, that starting off with your credit, let's talk about the methods of building credit. What are the best uh -huh. methods of starting to build out your credit for a college student? Yeah. So it, it's the, the, some of those same pieces that we touched on a little bit earlier, team. And this is, again, another really, really great question. We've got the options to, hey, let's know our credit. Let's go ahead and go to annualcreditreport.com. Let's take a look at where we stand today. Maybe you don't see anything on there. That's a great place to start. But then from there, let's start looking at our individual situation. How much do I make? How, what are my expenses, my fixed expenses every, every month? What's the rent? What's the mortgage? What's my car payment? How do I factor those pieces in? And then from there, that will help you make a determination on the types of cards you, could, you should consider. Again, I'm going to keep leaning on it. That college card team for our scholars that are on, that's, the, that's one of the best ones to consider because it's going to be one of those ones, and we referenced it at the top of the call, that it's going to be more readily available for you simply because you are in college. But it's going to be on that lower scale, lower end from a from the available credit that you have. It's going to be on those lower levels. So maybe consider starting there. We talked again earlier about the options that are available. Maybe you get that card from Exxon. Maybe you get that card from a retailer in some way, shape, or form. In some instances, we found that those may be a little easier to qualify for. 
than other types of areas. So again, you need to take all of these things into consideration, but start with those cards as, a, as an option or start with that college card, start with that secured card. Remember we talked about those earlier. Hey, if my paycheck comes in for $500, I'd like to get a secured credit card where the only thing I can spend is $500. It's almost like you're depositing the money in and then you're debiting it out and then you can add more to it. So that's another option. And before you know it, again, as you're building credit, you're going to find those offers are coming to me. And Dominique, I'm assuming this happens with you and with Angel. You get stacks of things in the mail uh, over time, and you now have to start making decisions. Okay, when did I apply for credit last? Is this an option that's available for me in a given area? Are they going to run my credit score? How well have I performed? What's the probability that I'm going to be accepted for this card or whether I'm going to be declined for it? I think those are all things that you kind of Kind of factor in, but again, stick with those college cards. My suggestion would be to look, really take a close evaluation of those college cards for starters. Look at some of the secured credit options that may be available as well. And then again, if push comes to shove, take a look at some of the smaller options for a card from your local gas station where you're, where you're getting fill-ups or from maybe your favorite retailer uh, in given types of areas. But again, we've got to check the annual percentage rate on those. Remember, our goal is to pay off everything every month, but if not, you're going to be paying some of the interest and then interest will accrue. And that will be an additional amount that you'll have to pay on top of what you borrowed. And Dominic, I'll end it with this one. This goes into that factor of, again, we'll stick with Jay's. You know, you buy, you get, you know, you hit on the sneakers app, which Dominic hits on the sneakers app apparently all the time. She gets all the, you got, y'all should see her Jay's. Trust me. She hits all the time. Some of them hit. What does that mean? I'm talking about you win on the sneakers app and this is $220. If you're charging that on your credit card and you were only paying the minimum, Dominique, those J's did not cost you $220. If you only paid the minimum over that time frame, you may be looking at $400 J's, $500 J's, $700 J's. So keep those things in mind, team. What you're buying today, let's make sure that it's something that I know I'm going to continue to use or I'm using today's dollars knowing what the value will be in the future. That's a really easy way to think about it. Really, really easy way to think about it. And yet, now, y'all, she got some J's, by the way, too. So maybe when you see Dominique, see, what the hold up? What, she got she probably got some fire on today. I won't go there. <laughs> like they know me in the office, but they know I work on good credit behind. Of course it. <laughs> you do. You do. You do. Now, when discussing interest, what determines bad uh bad plan um interest rate and what number should we never go towards? Yeah, so this is this is one of those interesting pieces, team. And remember how we factored it in for that fifteen thousand dollar loan example. The person that was at the fair level is going to pay a higher interest rate. And again, for our example, our hypothetical, there was 15% interest. For a person that's at that good level, we had them coming in right at 10%. But that excellent, you know, those Dominiques of the world, the angels of the world, that super great credit, boy, they're in that green range, and they are able to get the best interest rates. Now, I want you all to type in, for those that are in front of your computer, type in this for me on Google, annual percentage rate average card. I'm going to submit to you, team, that 15% that we're talking about, that is a hypothetical number. You may see 20%. You may see 25%. You may see 30% as your annual percentage rate, that interest rate. This is, goes back to that principle, everybody, of why we got to pay. We got to do everything we can. Things happen. But we got to do everything we can to pay off that balance every month because we do not want to carry that over that interest unless we absolutely, absolutely have to. So, Dominique, those are factors. But again, this is also the time where you can call your credit card company and say, wow, hey, listen, my interest rate is 29% here. Are there any special promotions that would give me a better rate? I'm a high performer. I'm doing a great job with the work that I'm doing relative to my credit. So I'm looking at it here. Person put it to the chat. They're saying that the average right now is about 23%. That is significant, team, when you're talking about carrying it over month after month after month. And so factor those pieces in as you're as you're considering things for, for what you want to do. But again, be on the phone, be in contact with your lenders. You're performing well. Hey, run into a challenge. Is there an opportunity for me to, to have a special percentage rate? Call them up. They've already extended the credit to you. Call them up, have that conversation, and see if there's some flexibility that they can, that they can provide you in an area. But keep in mind, team, they are not obligated to do it. Those interest rates are what they call a variable rate. It can go up and down. We talked about the interest rate change. Uh, from a couple from a couple of weeks ago now, that will impact your revolving credit and what you have to pay. 
So keep that in mind. I, I wouldn't say, and a person asked specific, what's a good number? The lower, the better. <laughs> Dominic, I'll, I'll put it there. The lower, the better. But again, as our colleague here, and thank you for the person who put this in the chat, around 23% right now is the average rate that we're seeing. So thus, all the re more reason, team. I know I keep riding this the same horse. Why we want to pay that thing off every month. Do everything we can to pay every to pay it off every month or pay a little bit above so we can continue to, to eliminate that there. So, Dominique, these are great questions so far. Really, really great questions. Yeah, I'm loving them. The next question coming in is, how do you personally divide your salary into percentages? For example, emergency funds, investing, yeah. and retirement. It's a great, great question. And again, all these questions, scholars, you guys are right on it. For our personal perspective, and again, we're going to share some personal things here. There are contributions that we make to our church. So that's a, a first portion of, of something that we do. In addition, we have those fixed expenses, whether it's a car, whether it's a home, whether it's, again, the credit card payments that we have to make. Those are the pieces that we know are kind of those fixed numbers that we're focusing in on in, in given types of areas. And there's all kinds of studies out there that tell you, hey, you know, your DTI should be here, your DTI should be there. And we even gave those ranges earlier, right? Are you at the 30%? Are you at that 35 plus percent? Are you in the 50 into that red area? So you can kind of use those as barometers to the person that asked this question to tell you where you should be. This also gives you, again, such a great question. This also gives you the ability to make adjustments. No more eating out. I'm not telling you to eat ramen every night, but maybe maybe it's no longer two, Taco Tuesday. Maybe, maybe it's ramen Tuesday. Maybe it's PB&J Wednesday, Dominique. We have to make the adjustments in those years because, again, job, team, our, jo our job is to eliminate this debt. Same principles that you heard from Casey and Sylvia when we talked about the paying back student loans earlier this year. It's the same principle there. So again, everybody's situation is going to be a little different, but again, that 30 to 35 range, we generally say that that's going to be a pretty good space for you to, to potentially be operating in. Again, when you're starting to get a little bit higher than that or getting into that red area, it's exactly what was in the deck. Let's make some adjustments in the spaces where we need to. Maybe we cut off going out. Maybe the girlfriend's trip out of the country to use the new passport that we got. Uh-uh. I may have to skip this one, guys. I'll see you in 12 months. I've got some other things that I'm focusing in on now. They're important to me as I am building my credit and building for the future. Really, really important pieces there, friend. So much great information right there that you're giving out. It's, listen, it's all, it's all free. And Dominic, this is what I love about these is we're able to kind of give a little bit of our story and, and share. And team, here's the other piece. I'll touch on this one. I'm way older than everybody on the phone. Everybody that's on, trust me. The way that I dealt with credit when I was in my 20s and even in the 30s is way, is different, team, than the way that I do now. Back in the day, again, it's credit cards that I have now, you would go on campus and you would, uh, they would give you a T-shirt. <laughs> they, they, they give you the pizza slices. Now, there's some new regulations that have come out that have shifted uh, the, the ability there to be able to do those types of things. Uh, but but there's some there's again there's great resources that that are out there and given space but but it has changed even since then and team learn from the things that we've I won't say our mistakes because every every L is not a loss it's a learn make sure that you're learning from others again ask that auntie ask the uncle ask grandmom ask granddad ask a trusted partner hey how did you do? I'm just getting started with credit what's your journey been with credit. What are some of the biggest challenges that you've faced? Utilize AI. Ask AI some of those questions. Get some of those pieces back so you can kind of start building for the future. But it's okay to ask, everybody. Okay to ask. Listen, I had a great suggestion. Angel, thank you for this one. I would encourage everyone that's out there to utilize and just do a fast search for applying for a credit card online. This is a really, really great resource that's available from Wells Fargo. And do this across all of the companies that you're considering establishing credit with, but utilize the resources there. We've made this available to help you along your credit card journey. Again, just a great website. Apply for a credit card online. Wells Fargo, if you type that in or visit that website, it's going to come up for you. And then in turn, you can look at all of the different credit card offerings that are available. And then in turn, make the decision that is best for you. I love the product suite that we have. I believe that it is. It's great. I want you to take a look at those pieces and then make a determination on whether that meets the things, the criteria that you're shooting for 
across your credit journey and the things that you're building on. But I'm excited about the resources that we have. Again, Beyond College is a great one. I'm also excited about these other great resources. So Angel, thank you so much for that suggestion. That's a really, really great one to remind the scholars of. Thank you for that. All right, Dominic, we'll take maybe one or two more and then we'll we'll get everybody on the rest of their, of their evening and into this early weekend here. All righty, well, the final question we have coming in is, how many credit cards should I have? Yeah, so I'll speak from a personal example on our side. So for our family, I have, I think either five or six right now. But keeping in mind, team, I I'm a lot older, as I've said, <laughs> than everybody that's on tonight. And my earliest ones I got in my 20s. And the most recent ones I got probably in the last two years. And here's how I'm determining what we what we will do with these. What's changed in life? What's the special options that are available? Is this card providing you with bonus miles or bonus points in a given area? Hey, maybe now I'm willing to apply for this. Do I have other credit that's been extended from, you name it, uh, across the board? You're able to kind of factor some of those things in. So again, from my perspective, I think we have a total of six. Uh, and then maybe we have one or two others that, that are smaller ones, let's say maybe at a retail store uh, or maybe at a, one of the one of the big box shops. And so maybe probably a total of eight of those, Dominique, if I, if I had to guess across uh, for family members, I would say we probably have family members that are in a similar space. Uh, our kids probably have not probably I know that they have a few less uh, than us, but probably eight total or, from our perspective. Would you mind sharing how many you have? Is that OK for me to ask? No, it's quite all right to ask. Um, I'm actually at number five for myself. And like you said, it all started with in my early 20s is when I first mm -hmm. got my first credit card. And um, my most recent credit card that I actually just received was in August of this year okay. was my most recent credit card that I was able to obtain. But it's really a, all about, and I would highly recommend this, doing your research on what's best. I have one yes. where I get... I'll get a certain percentage back on depending on what I'm purchasing. I'll yes, have another one that's directly just for travel purposes. Actually, I have two for travel purposes. So it's things like that that you want to take in consideration because there's benefits behind it. When you're dealing with travel involved, you could get a checked bag in for free. You can get points yes. um, towards travel. So that's where you really want to examine. But like Dewey is really pressing. You really want to make sure you're staying within your limit. Sticking within your limit is very helpful. As I've told any college student or that I've ever worked with, crawl before you walk, walk before you run and run before you sprint. You don't want to sprint and you're looking like Bambi at the end of the day and you're a little bit lost. <laughs> you definitely want to build yourself into this because you're no longer playing checkers. You're now playing chess at this you point. And you really want to help. So, and communicate with your bank. There are yeah. many resources that if you unfortunately just can't make a payment, if you get in front of it ahead of time, they can be able to assist and help you out. That's what they're here for. It's a family at the end of the day. All they're asking you to do is just keep your word and keep the, keep honest with them and they will always be there for you. So we've all made Dominique. the same happen, but yeah, you definitely want to go about it correctly. I told y'all Dominique should have done this presentation instead of me. Dominique, you could you could have done this. You could have, and I said the same thing last month too. I was like, y'all y'all didn't need me. Y'all could have just done this. But again, these are things that everyone needs to evaluate individually. If your person does a heavy travel, absolutely. Look at the benefits that are associated with those cards. Maybe it's travel miles. Maybe there's a special promotion. We do this periodically. Hey, there's a special promotion that's available. So baby, this month, we're going to use everything we can on this. Card. Everything is going on this card. And the other ones are at zero. And then we're going to work to pay everything off for this for this given time frame. Hey, we're really going to use this card for the next six months because they've given us a bonus promotion to get five times the points. Or if you stay at a particular hotel brand, you get 10 or 20 points in given areas. Man, those things can factor in and can help you add. But scholars, I cannot, I know we're out of time. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of doing research because everyone's experience is going to be different. You may not want to travel. You may be interested in that reward card that just gives you points back every month where you can go and get a gift card somewhere. Christmas season's coming up. Holiday season. You may want to get those kinds of resources. You may want the card that pays you back cash. There are cards that do that. Boy, you swipe, you pay it off. And the next thing you know, you got 70 cents of credit that you've earned or $2 that you've earned. And then they pay those things back to you. Everyone's situation is going to be different. Make determinations on the things that are best for you. Don't look at the grass greener on the other side. 
Don't look at what Johnny, Jane, or Tamika are doing. Don't do that. Focus on your journey, doing the things that you need to build credit, and let's continue to ask for help and supports as we need to. So, Dominique, I think we've covered on some good stuff. Let, give, let you give a closing thought here, and then we'll go into these last items, get everybody onto their night. Look, as I could always tell everyone, closed mouths don't get fed. Ask your question, <laughs> do your research, make sure that you execute out every resource that you can. Availability is there, help is there. Do not be toxic independent. Don't try to figure out on your own. Stay away from the TikTok trends of what's going on. It might land you somewhere that you wanna be. Just head on over to your bank and make sure that you have your helpful friends of Wells Fargo guide you into this process because it's adulthood is crazy but sometimes it can be beneficial behind it. <laughs> That's Dominique Garcia, y'all. Tell, tell Mr. Thompson we don't need him no more. I mean, we love Lynn Thompson. Yeah. Yeah, some of y'all been on, but tell Mr. Thompson, you know, put him on the back burner. Just let Dominique yeah. do the rest of the freezing. Dominique and Angel can do the rest of them. All right, listen, team, great Q&A. Thanks for the questions that have come in. Don't forget to tap into some of those other resources that we made reference to earlier. Plug into those. Do some research on your own. Make sure you're connecting into the things that you know are going to be really, really helpful for you. All right, get some, some reminders here. Listen, we got some exciting things coming up. Uh, the ADW Tour is back off and running, just coming off of an amazing, amazing event that took place down in Bowie, Maryland. Hey, Bowie, it was great. Had an opportunity to be on campus with, with the team there. So huge shout out to Juana Kay and Doris Canty Brown and to the entire team on just a great, great event that they facilitated there. If you get a minute, Click the QR code here that should take you out to the playback that ran on the ABC, ABC affiliate there in the D.C. market and region. A great, great recap. And don't forget, the tour is going to be returning to campus in 2025. If you are on today and the tour has not been to your campus, hit that QR code. Go to the website. Fill out the form. Let them know that you heard about it here on Beyond College and that you're, or, or the playback and let them know that you're interested in bringing the tour to their to your respective campus. I know you'll love it. It's amazing how many young scholars, Dominique, that weren't even born <laughs> when, when the show was airing. Uh, and, you know, Daryl and Kadeem and Cree and Chardonnay and Kadeem and Jasmine, well, they're just blown away. And of, of course, Glenn, you know, the, the uh, OG Glenn Terman, they love it every time that they hear from scholars and Dawn, of course, too, every time they hear from scholars that they weren't even alive when the show was on and yet they're enjoying it. So check it out. A different world tour. We're excited to serve as the premier financial services provider for that amazing, amazing work. All right. I think we're down to some reminders. Dominic, we're running out of webinars. You have to cry here. But here's the playbacks. Remember, these are all available on the Mighty MEAC digital network. Be their YouTube channel, budgeting and money management, mentors and sponsors, resume writing. We've got those pieces that, that are there. We have the additional content that we covered for the first portion of the year. And then obviously we've got internships, critical one. Internships are open, y'all. Do not wait. If you're looking for internships, you've got to be applying now to those things. The deadlines are quickly approaching. And in some instances, they've already closed. So you got to be able to get into those things. The success strategies. For college, the finance edition, again, a lot of the things that we extracted from today are, are work closely in those same principles for, for the strategies for college. Cyber safety, uh, one of our favorite sessions of the year is where we were getting cyber safe. And then obviously the content that we shared here today, that again is on the, the MEAX digital network. And then last but not least, team, we've got our great session. I mentioned Juana K. Brady and team a little bit earlier on focusing on your pathway. Again, the emphasis on your pathway to home ownership. That's the session that will be coming up for us here in just a couple of weeks in November. So with that said, everybody, thank you so, so much for being on with us for today. I, I wanna just say how much I appreciate those that have joined these webinars. Do me a favor. For those that are out there that are either on, listening now live or listening to playback, do me a favor. Jump online, jump into your favorite social media channel, Throw a quote out there. Hey, I heard Dominic say this. I heard Angel mention this, or I heard this on another broadcast earlier in the year. Do that for us. Let's pay it forward. Let's share this information with others so they can grow and continue to develop as they're building their credit, as they're building their financial acumen, as they're building their career pathways. Let's find a way to pay it forward. Even just by sharing this information with others, we believe that, that it can be a great benefit to others down the line. So with that said, we'll see you all in a couple of weeks on November the 7th. 
for a great discussion that we'll have around your pathway to home ownership. I want to thank the MEAC team for all of the amazing, amazing work. And I think on next month's call, we'll talk about uh, who's actually going to be hosting us for 2025. We have a brand new partner who's going to be hosting the series in, in 2025. And we'll be able to share that information during our next broadcast. So everybody continue to stay safe. Let's have a wonderful rest of the October. Let's finish strong. Thank you to those in the chat that are dropping the hearts and emoji, heart emoji back to you guys too. Just thank you for being on these calls. Let's continue to win. Let's continue to share this information. Remember, your financial journey is your journey. You run the best race you can. You drive your car as fast as you can. Let's start at five miles an hour. And then let's be speeding down the line in the days ahead. Everybody have a wonderful rest of your day. Wonderful weekend. We look forward to seeing you next month. Everybody take care. Thanks again for the Wells Fargo team. Good night, everybody.